Hello. We mentioned in the introduction that our objective was to derive the spectrum for a signal that was sampled in order to come up with the discrete time Fourier transform as well as the relationship between the discrete time Fourier transform and the continuous time Fourier transform. Now at this point, we know the continuous time Fourier transform, meaning x of j omega, the spectrum as a function of continuous omega is x of t minus j omega t dt. Now in order to apply the continuous time Fourier transform, that is what we have here, our ideal spectrum analyzer, we need to have an x of t. Notice that's a signal that is t is a function of it's a real value, it's continuous time. Okay, x of t is a continuous time signal. It's continuous time. So if we want to see what the spectrum will be of a signal that we sampled, we need to model the sampling process in continuous time so that we can plug it into this equation. Does it make sense? And so consider a signal here, I'm going to call this x of t. That's a continuous time signal. If we have a mathematical expression for it, we can plug it into our continuous time Fourier transform and find the spectrum as a function of omega. That's the first requirement, right? Continuous time, a mathematical expression for it. Now, what about if we were to sample it? If we were to sample it, this would look something like this. I'm going to use another color. We will measure, take a measurement there. That will be x of 0, then take another measurement, take another measurement, take another measurement. We will be taking measurements, right? So this will be one, the sampling interval, sampling period, 2 ts, 3 ts, 4 ts, etc. So we already established when we went over sampling, that if we take x of nt and we evaluate t at nts to create this x of nts signal, which by the way, it is equal to x of n, n just being the number here, this is one, one, two, three, four, five, okay? The TS just tells you the distance, the time, how long it took between one sample or the other. But the samples are the same. We already established that X of N sampled at a finite number of points. Remember, sampling was the process of measuring a continuous time signal at periodic intervals of time in order to create a discrete time signal. X of n and x of t, if you sample fast enough, meaning greater than twice the maximum frequency of x of t, is if x of t is unlimited, you do not lose any information. And so what we are trying to do here is compute the spectrum of a sample signal, a discrete time signal, right? The way we go from continuous time to discrete time is through sampling. We need to do this x of t sample at t equals nts. Right? The same way that right now in continuous time we are using the continuous time Fourier transform for everything. For signals that are uh, periodic, signals that are quasi-periodic, big signals that are periodic, any signal that is continuous time and for which we have a mathematical expression, now that we allow impulses to play the game, so to speak, we are able to find the spectrum for. So we would like to use it now to find the spectrum of a discrete type signal. And to do that, we will have to say, well, how do we model the process of sampling in continuous time? Meaning we would like to have an x of n 
sigma. Um, if we have this, that sample, we would like to have a signal sample of t, but this is still continuous time, we'll put it. And so it says here, use the properties of the impulse function to model the sampling process in continuous time. That is, create a continuous time signal xs of t, that is a sample version of x of t at this time, and provide a graphical representation. Well, notice that any time that we're working in continuous time, where the, the, the variable is, is time t is in the real line, you cannot just have something occurring at a point. If you have that, we need to have impulses, meaning in order to model this, we will need to have, at each point where we sample, we will need to have an impulse. That's what we will need to do. And then the area of the impulse, like let's consider here, the area will be x of n, so in this case will be 1 ts. How do we model this? Well, let's do it. Let's pick one of them. Let's imagine that we wanted to pick this impulse, a 4ts. That, thing, that impulse will be delta of <clears throat> t minus nts for any, for any one, it will be NTS evaluated at N equals four, right? And then we are multiplying that times X, which was X of T, but also at NTS. That's what we have here. This will be equivalent to X four times TS Delta T minus NTS. This will be one of them. I will pick that and zero for all the others. What this shows you clearly is that we could add this for all the other ends, meaning we can do, if we multiply X of N times, I'm going to add a bunch of impulses, an impulse string, Delta of T minus NTS for N equals minus infinity to infinity. What well, this is, is impulses. Looks like this, right? also for negative values, since I did for minus infinity to infinity. This is what we have here. Impulses, all with area of one, at NTS, right? Well, N belongs to C. Notice, one, two, three. That's what we have here. So for N equals zero, we'll, we'll be talking about here, zero. For N equals one, we'll be talking about this impulse, N, one, TS n equals two, two ts, n equals minus one, minus one ts. You multiply that times your original function, and what we get is the sampling process that we were expecting, right? We get, this is the original function. Well, something like this. Now notice that this multiplication, this is equal to the sum of x of nts, because it only, when you multiply everywhere else, it's going to be zero. Notice these zeros. This is zero. The multiplication makes it zero. 
NTS only going to pick these values. Delta T minus NTS for N equals minus infinity to infinity. Okay. So let's just remember what we were trying to do. Our objective was to find the spectrum of a signal that had been sampled, that is a discrete time signal. But our spectrum analyzer requires a continuous time signal. So we need to have a continuous time signal that model the sampling process. And that's what we have done, notice. We can say x sample of t, which will be x of t, t evaluated at nts, at those periods of time, is equal to sum x of nts delta t minus nts m minus infinity to infinity. Or our continuous time signal is equal to Notice, function is, is, is t. It's a, it's a continuous time signal, right? t belongs to the real numbers. And it is a mathematical expression based on the impulse function. So can we plug it in here? The continuous time Fourier transform, the answer is yes. That's going to enable us to find the expression for the spectrum of such signal. And such signal is not just any signal, it's a very broad class of signals. It is discrete type signals that were sampled from continuous time signal, or discrete time signals in general then. So what we find is that this sample signal as a function of time, it is impulses shifted, notice these are shifted impulses by the sampling times instances, here you have an impulse, and another impulse, they are all shifted. Okay, so delta of t minus 4t, for instance, is this impulse. Okay, so you have impulse. They are going to be modulated times x of nts. And in those impulses, if you were to find the area under each one of those, it will come to nts. And then this is a particular impulse. If you just pick one, everything will be zero. So to add all the others, you just have to add them as a function of n, which n belongs to c. It is these numbers here that we have, the 0n, 1n, 2n, 3, 4, etc., which are going to just be the sample number. It's going to indicate the order of the sample. Now, if you multiply multiply m times the sampling period, you also get the time information. Okay, so one last recap. We want to find the spectrum of a discrete time signal. We're going to use our continuous time spectrum analyzer, which requires a continuous time signal. Therefore, we are going to model the sampling process to create a continuous time signal that we have here that is a sample version of another continuous signal which now we are going to be able to plug into that equation to derive the spectrum of signals that have been sampled or the spectrum of discrete time signals they have been sampled they have not been quantized And that spectrum is going to be the discrete time Fourier transform. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, now that we have an expression for, for the sample signal, we can plug it into our ideal spectrum analyzer to derive the discrete time Fourier transform. Thank you.